One of my Patreon supporters sent me his Sun Hokey Prusa i3 printer to do some evaluation. But while shipping, the acrylic frame just cracked into pieces. So I decided to rebuild it into this aluminum extrusion version with a bunch of 3D printed parts. I'll show you how it turned out on today's Filament Friday. Now some of you may remember I bought a Prusa i3 design from monoprice.com. It was a rebranded Wanho Duplicator i3. And actually I used that in several videos, but man, I had a hard time getting that thing to print reliably. Turns out the hot end just could not maintain a constant temperature. And it was even worse at, on ABS than it was on PLA. So I had 30 days to return it and the 30 days was coming up. So I just decided to send it back. And so then I had this printer that Marcelo had loaned me and I decided to build it into this. And there's several pieces that I 3D printed. The only thing I didn't have to print was the, the carriage here, the x-axis carriage. This stayed intact, so all I had to do was build everything else. So let me show you the details of how I did it. So here's the pieces that I found on Thingiverse. It's the Scalar Family 3D Printer by 3D Modular Systems. And all the pieces were designed for this type of frame construction, a 2020 aluminum frame. So I started by making the mounts for the rods of the y-axis. Then I made a motor mount and a tensioner for the belt. And that's two pieces. But the belt was a little short, so I had to custom design in Tinkercad a belt connector for underneath the bed. So then I had to modify the motor mount for the z-axis to increase the spacing between the threaded rod and the support rod. Then I printed upper mounts to hold the support rods in place. And finally I had to custom design a mount for the stop switch. The extruder mount was really difficult to use so I just made a custom bracket that the extruder mount slid into. And then I made some thumb wheels for the print bed. To test the printer, I chose my pawn design from my book, Beginner's Guide to 3D Printing. And here it is printing for the first time and it looked really good. Everything was nice and round and up close. It looked like it was going to turn out good, but when it was done, it had some gaps here as you can see on the left. So I adjusted the extruder speed to increase the amount of filament and the second one was better. And then finally I increased it a little more and I got a perfect print. As you can see, the third test was perfect. So I also tried printing the cone and it printed pretty good. It came to a nice point, just a little bit of melting at the top. So then I tried that 3D Benchy print and it didn't do so well. I have a lot more adjustments to make on that thing. Now I even printed with ABS. Here's a chest pawn with black ABS and it came out really good. So this was a lot of fun and I really appreciate Marcelo loaning me his machine. Even if I had to rebuild it, look what I got to do. So this was really a great project and it makes me wonder if maybe I should try and build my own you know, one of those big ones. It's basically the same technology. So we'll see, maybe that's something I do in the future. Now also I wanted to talk a little bit more about the Wanho experience because that temperature and stability caused issues like this. See this was a print that's supposed to angle the face on the front of the control box for that Wanho. I had the little older style which had a flat face so it's harder to read. And this started to print really good. It looks really, really nice. But the bonding between layers was terrible because of that temperature instability. So this thing is really, really brittle. It just, just broke apart as it printed. And this is what I was getting on several prints for videos. You know, that Santa Claus video, man, I think printed like five times just to get it to come out once. So. I thought, you know what, maybe I should try this on another printer. So I tried it on my Repetier, my reflashed Repetier Da Vinci. And I didn't know at the time, but it was starting to develop temperature problems as well. So I got about the same results. So I thought, well, maybe it's the, maybe it's the file, I don't know. So I contacted another one of my Patreon supporters, this time Neil Phillips. He's actually bought a Robo 3D based on my recommendations and his own reviews. And he was really happy with it. So I asked him if he would print this same design on his in ABS. And he went out of his way. He, 
he mostly prints PLA, but he bought some ABS filament and printed it for me and then sent it to me. I mean, is that awesome or what? I have some great Patreon supporters. And this is it. And it came out beautiful. I mean, this is really a good print. And so, obviously, Robo3D can print PLA and ABS really well. And I could have used this if I kept the, the machine. But just for uh, a kick, I tried printing it on my stock DaVinci 1.0, figuring this thing would never work. That's why I asked Neil to do it. And it actually printed decent. I mean, it came out pretty good. I would say not as good as the Robo, but pretty close. So once I knew that it could print, the DaVinci 1.0 could print this, that's when I knew that the Wanho needed to go back. Maybe I got it done, and I'm sure that's what the case is. Now, I did read online a few people have had this issue, but I have talked to Wan Ho directly, and they told me they'd actually send me a printer from my channel. I'm still waiting to, to get confirmation of that being sent, but maybe I'll get a good one and I can give you a full review of that thing. But if you're thinking about buying one of those, please do your own research. Just don't go by me and, and the dud that I got, you know. And I did buy it through Monoprice, so I don't know what the differences there are. But they were really good about it. They gave me my money back, and uh, we'll see where it goes from here. So after having the success with my 1.0, I decided to try that Benchy on my other printers. And here's the 3D Benchy printed on my 1.0, my stock 1.0. And it printed good. I wouldn't say it's great. It's rough on top and it's the smokestack's a little bit shifted. But it's a good print. So it's about the best you can do though because you can't adjust anything on that. It's all locked down. So next I tried the DaVinci Junior. And this thing printed really good. It's a lot better than the 1.0. The smokestack is really clean. The edges are clean. It's a little bit rough in spots, so it's not 100%, but for a $349 printer, I see why my prints on this thing turned out so good. And then there's my Fabricator Mini, my favorite printer of all. And this thing is absolutely perfect. I've got one flaw. i got a little bit extra plastic on one of the arches, and there's a few minor flaws like on the outside here, just real minor. But other than that, this is like the perfect print. I'll show a close-up of these at the end of the video, but man, if I could only find a machine like this that would print as good as that Fabricator Mini, I'd be sold. This truly is the best. So anyway, that's all I got for this week. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you like it and you wanna see more. I mean, we've crossed now like 5,300 subscribers. I'm shooting for that 10 grand. That's my big time goal. And seems like once you hit 10 grand, then YouTube starts to promote you a little more. So that's what I'm hoping to get to. If you want to help, you know, tweet this thing out. Uh, send it on your Facebook page. That's a great way to help me out. And if you want to help financially, of course, a dollar to my Patreon account at the link up here goes a long way. Because my Patreon supporters help support things like this, projects like this, so I can build this and maybe help you if you want to build your own printer or do other things. So it goes a long way. It really does. So that's all I've got for now. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.